Thank you for joining with me again today on Side by Side. As I was saying yesterday, my main goal is on this journey as we walk through the Bible and walk through our lives, that we just point out little things along the way, highlight things that stand out in Scripture. And yesterday we were looking at the tree beside the water, maybe a, a dry riverbed. We could feel something, the heat, and around us there was nothing but lifeless shapes of what had been other trees and vegetation. And yet there was that tree standing full of leaves and even some hints of fruit coming. And all because its roots were going down deep into a source, a hidden source of supply, all pointing us to the very source we have in our Lord Jesus Christ as we go through whatever hard times we're going to face in this coming year. Today I want to take us further along the road, as it were. Metaphorically speaking, we come to another place and there, looking across, we see someone plowing. And that's the way, what we want to think about today. It's in Luke chapter 9 and it's verse 62, where Jesus says, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back or keeps looking back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. But we need to go back to the first verse of that section in order to get the context of this. Verse 51 says, As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead. They went into a Samaritan village to get him, sorry, to get things ready for him, but the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus then replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. One of the little things that strikes me about our modern day and Facebook in particular is that you can see somewhere along the side of the page, if you have one, a Facebook page that is, the number of followers that you have. Everybody is following something or someone. Maybe not consciously, maybe they haven't thought it all out, but there is a sense in which we all follow something. But what does it really mean here when Jesus says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God? The context was Jesus going to Jerusalem. That sets the scene. He's heading out for his final encounter. That is when he will meet his death, when he will offer up his life, when he will become the Lamb of God, slain for the sins of the world. And as he goes there, there are people who reject him. It says they did not welcome him. And Jesus then continues on his journey. This is really asking us to think about what it means to follow Jesus. You see, our Christian life is not only to know that Jesus is with us and think of all the benefits that come to us because we are trusting him and, and, and he is our saviour. It clearly is a matter also of us following him and being his disciples, not just believing on him and receiving from him the benefits that he has won for us, but truly being his disciples. I think the danger for many of us is that we are glad to have all the blessings that he would give us, but we haven't yet really considered seriously, what does it mean to be a disciple? What is involved in that? Well, there were a number of people in this, in this discussion, this dialogue, and the way that Luke has grouped it together, it, it clearly is trying to explain to us 
that for some people, there are other things that will come into their lives and form what we might call distractions. Something that takes our eye away from the key important ministry and mission in our lives to have Jesus first in everything. Notice how in the two cases that Jesus relates to, the man who replies, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus then says something that might sound shocking to you, let the dead bury their own dead. I think what he's saying is let the spiritually dead look after those and then another, he says, I will follow you, but, but first, again, this word first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family, which would have been, really been a long extended process of goodbyes, really distracting. Whether they would ever remember that he had gone, decided to follow Christ is, is questionable. So when Jesus says, no one who puts his hand to the ply and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom, he's really talking about, you know, this idea of, being distracted, having your mind in two places. You can imagine if you and I are standing on the side of the road and we look across the field and there we see the picture that Jesus has of the man with the plough and the animal, be it an oxen or a horse or some other form of animal that is pulling the plough. And there he has got his hands on the plough, but his head is not in the direction that the horse or the plough is heading. What's going to happen? Well. The plough may not even go straight to begin with. It'll not be a very straight furrow. It'll be a very, a very poor job that he will do at the end of the day. You would nearly feel like saying to him, would you turn round? W would you just get on? Don't look, don't look at me. <laughs> Keep looking forward. Keep in the direction that you're going in. I think that Jesus is saying to us at the very beginning of this year, saying he's inviting us, I think, because isn't that what we see here? Jesus invites come follow me and when he says follow me aren't there two important things there there is the emphasis that you can place on the word follow or you could put the emphasis on the word me if you place the word the emphasis on the first word to follow akalotheo means is keep your eye on me closely put your feet where my feet are stay close beside me i'm moving forward i'm doing something Come, let's do it together. If you put the emphasis on the word me, it also indicates that he has set the pattern. Follow me. I'm here. Keep your eyes on me. You're not in this alone. There's a me in your life. There's a Jesus in your life. There's no such thing as a disciple who's simply left there, abandoned to their own devices. The Lord Jesus has not only gone before us, but he is with us. And he is also encouraging us and teaching us. He will show you what he wants you to do every day and from his word. Then he says, just follow me. Come, come on, let's go and do it. As some of you know, we've recently acquired a pup who is providing background noise in my recording. I had to do it two or three times because he has a squeaky toy. And if you'd heard the squeaky toy, you would have thought we were strangling him. But as I go around the garden, wherever it is, I'm often saying, come on, come on. And I've now got a little box full of goodies that I shake and he knows, oh, that's what I want because there's something good if I follow him. Do you know, there's something really good if you follow Jesus and I follow Jesus. It may sometimes be quite difficult. There will be hardship, as he says. There's no promise of all the successful things that others may say. You're not going to become a celebrity. But you know what? You're going to find the life that he is for you, which is everything that you need and I need. And that's the most important thing. So as we think about starting out this year, let's remember to encourage and pray for one another that we'll be willing to pay the sacrifices, make the costs, because it is well worth following Jesus. And, and remember what I said at the beginning. Everybody is following someone or something, leading to somewhere, but only those who follow Jesus will find themselves being led to the place that he says, the way, the truth, and the life that leads to life itself, in fact. So let's enjoy the journey and enjoy the journey together. Eyes front, focused, let's go. God bless. <laughs>